Today I'm showing you how to make stainless steel rings like this look like this using your laser engraver and I seem to have found a small bug in the light burn. Today I'm using my Gweki G2 Pro 30 watt fiber laser. However, you can achieve similar results with a diode laser and a rotary. I'll share some in-depth how-tos on that later on. First up, let's talk about the setup for the rotary. So on the Gweki G2 Pro, the way I have it set up is I have my rotary in this orientation. Let's just talk really quickly about the coordinate plane from you know, grade school geometry classes. And I apologize for those of you that may have just had a visceral reaction to me saying geometry from grade school. Trust me, it took me about 17 takes to say that without throwing up in my mouth a little bit. So if you imagine this is our plane, this direction is the X axis and this direction is the Y axis. So basically the way I have mine set up is I have mine rotating. So we're talking about the rotation, not the direction it's facing, but the rotation of this is along the x-axis and i've done it this way because i just don't have enough room to hook this thing down in the other direction first thing is you need to know which direction you have your rotary set up so if you have it set up so the it is rotating in this direction that's the x-axis if you had this turned 90 degrees and it was rotating this way that would be the y-axis so let's go here into light burn we'll go to laser tools and rotary setup mine's already set up i've got it enabled and if we come down here and look it shows you we've got the rotary for the x-axis so again that's turning in this direction and if i just click this to set it to the y-axis you'll see it changes the arrow to this direction now everything else on the screen is specific to my setup the object diameter and circumference that is set up for this ring and then the rest of these settings are for the Gweki G2 Pro. Let me go over these really briefly in case you happen to have a G2 Pro and that's why you're watching this video. So basically our split setup here, this is how far the laser can move across the surface before it rotates, before the rotary itself moves. And then we have an overlap, that's how close the slices are to each other. And so on the Gweki G2 Pro, we have one millimeter slice, 0.1 overlap. The steps per rotation are 3200. Your motor speed settings are 100 minimum, 6400 max, 255 acceleration time, and 3200 return speed. Again, specific to this laser. So you'll need to look at your manufacturer setups if you have a different rotary and laser. We hit OK. I've got my dragon scales here with a gradient behind it. Now I'm going to show in a little bit how I did this and I'll also talk about my, my settings. But first, I just want to go ahead and get this thing going. Before we frame this up, uh, let me just show you what I've done here really quickly. So I've got two tool layers, actually. I've got the orange, which I'm using for my just my outline for the shapes, and then I've got a blue one. And if I turn this, the grayscale off, it might be hard to pick up, but they're right here in the middle. In fact, if I turn off the orange layer, you can see them. And the only reason I have this is for framing purposes. So when I click frame, You'll see I'm getting a large square here, which is the entire length of the object I'm going to engrave, but that's actually going to wrap around the ring. But if I turn on tool layers only, now it's putting it right in the middle. And the reason I did this is so that I can get this lined up on the ring back and forth so it's in the middle. Because if you have it doing the entire thing, it's, well, here, let me show you. See, it's just shooting back and forth and only, it's just very briefly does it focus on the ring, even if I turn on tool layer only. Now it's right in the middle. And so now I can get in here and line things up. I've got my spot here in the middle. And now, using my arrow keys and control, I get fine adjustment to slowly move this till it is centered. So that's good to go. We can click start. And then all this is just brought in from your rotary setup. I'm not gonna change anything and I'm gonna go ahead and start engraving this. A couple quick safety things here before we get started. First of all, I don't have the green shield on because I'm filming, otherwise I would have this on. I'm gonna wear my super stylish laser glasses here. And second, one of the features that I think is pretty cool about the G2 Pro is it has a separate power button for the laser source. So I don't have to like worry about being in here and accidentally setting off the laser because I have actually on occasion bumped the keyboard and started the thing before I meant to. With this button off, I can run this and the red lights or the red lasers will go and show me where things are happening, which is also kind of nice for setup if you want to test first. But until I push this button to turn on the laser power, the laser will not come on. So that's a very nice safety feature. And then I've got my exhaust fan back here that's gonna be drawing out. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's fire it up. Now, one important thing to know when this is done, it is super hot. 
So when you take this off of your uh, rotary, I recommend not touching it or just let it air cool for a while. Now, before we take a look at the final result of how the rings turned out, and yes, I said rings, and you'll see why I said rings and not ring in a second, I promise to show you how I got the gradient pattern. So what I got here is a brand new project. I brought in my scale pattern. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna set that as a tool layer. And then I've got this gradient that I created in Photoshop and I brought that in. And now I'm gonna drag this over top like so. I'm gonna resize the gradient so it's about the same like so. And then I'm just going to hold down shift and click on my tool layer. And then I'm going to right click and apply mask to image and boom, there we go. That's literally all there is to it. And you can do that with different vector shapes. It doesn't have to be just this one. One quick note. So if I grab this now, I can change the gradient darkness too by dragging and resizing it, which is cool. Sometimes you'll want to do this, but, 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 but here's a big, here's a big F. If you do this, the width of your item is going to be determined by the largest shape, which happens to be the gradient. So, if you're trying to make a pattern that wraps all the way around the ring, you have to remember that the gradient is bigger and you're not actually sizing it by your pattern. You're sizing it by the gradient, which is why I really recommend trying to get a gradient that is just the same size and you don't run into that issue, which I did because I was in a rush and I forgot. So let's, let's take a look at what happens when you do that. Here's what happens when you adjust it based on the size of the gradient and not the size of the pattern. You get this lovely gap. And as I said before, I didn't just have a ring. I had rings because I kept screwing it up. Now this one, I actually realized I got the gap down, but then I realized that the pattern has a gap in it. So I had to fix the pattern and I fixed the pattern and then I realized uh, it was too far to one side. So I had multiple attempts. I wouldn't call them failures. We'll call them learning experiences. Now, one thing when it comes to stainless steel and coloring is the focus. I will measure from the base plate to the top of the ring. 61.4, so 6.1 centimeters. And then on the laser, it has a scale here with an indicator, and you'll see that I've actually got mine set at 65, 66, and that's because you want to defocus a little bit. You want to defocus about three to four millimeters. In the end, it'll give you better color. So to start with, I used these stainless steel business cards to do testing on because they're cheaper than the rings per piece, so I saved a little bit of money there. And then once I sort of got my settings dialed in and started getting some cool patterns that I liked, then I transitioned to testing on these rings using the settings from the card as a starting point because obviously the stainless steel is slightly different. And these rings actually aren't mirrored. They were satin finished, so that caused some issues, but I started to get it dialed in. And then once I had some colors that I liked from these rings, then I locked those in and went on and did the final rings. And speaking of final rings, let's go see how the final rings actually turned out. I've discovered what appears to be a small bug in Lightburn. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so what I thought was happening was that the grayscale was being too big and it was using that and I was getting the wrong sizing for the image on the ring, but that's not what's happening. If you click on preview, you will see it's actually just cutting the image off and I'm not sure why. And I've spent hours and hours on the internet. I talked to Gwaiki and it's a Lightburn issue. And the only thing I found is a light burn forum post from a long time ago where somebody had sort of a similar issue and they said it was a minor bug and it may get fixed eventually. I'm not saying this is a bug. I'm, I don't know. I just have not been able to figure this out because if I get rid of this, I turn off the image and I make my layer solid as a fill and it's not a tool layer and there's no mask or anything. And now I do this, it works fine. So there's some kind of weirdness going on with the rendering of the grayscale that is breaking it. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at how the rings actually turned out. I couldn't resist throwing this ring up here. This is actually just one of my test rings, but I got a lot of cool colors on it and I really like it. So I'm sharing it with you. So this was supposed to be my finished ring. I'd even polished this so it wasn't just a satin finish anymore. But unfortunately, as you can see, it has the gap issue, which made me very sad but I still think it looks good. 
and then the giant pile of test rings here that I went through trying to get all this to work and banging my head against the wall because of the issue with light burn that I didn't realize was actually an issue. But hey, leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of patterns would you engrave on a ring? If you're ready to get started color engraving on stainless steel, check out my playlist here where I cover how to do this on both diode lasers and fiber lasers. Thanks for watching.